one one? Yes, I did. Okay. Now, from the time you terminated your phone call with Michael Amir to the time you called nine one one, in that period of time, is that when these events took place that you've described? Yes, it was. Okay. So that was a very short period of time. Is that fair to say? It was a fast period of time. I would say yes, sir. Uh, separating what can, the the observations you made, uh, the observations of Mr. Jackson laying on the bed with his palms up, the observations of the condom catheter, uh, and the observations, for example, of the IV stand. Were these uh, isolated observations, or were these observations you were making simultaneously to these events taking place? Absolutely. Sustained. Were these observations, you can answer yes or no, were these observa observations made simultaneously to these uh, talking about the uh, large propofol bottle inside the saline bag and you uh, placing that in the bag, uh, the other bag, at uh, Conrad Murray's instruction. Um, after these events took place uh, that you've been describing before the break, uh, at that time, did Conrad Murray instruct you to call 911? Yes, sir. Okay. Do you recall what his exact words were? He said, call 911. Okay. And do you know, you know from your phone records that that call was re uh, placed by you at 12.20 p.m.? Uh, yes, sir. Okay. You, you've reviewed your phone records? Correct. Okay. And that call is reflected uh, in People's 26. Uh, the bottom of People's 26, 1220, Alberto Alvarez calling 911 emergency operator, 163 seconds. Do you see that? Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Okay. And during this short period of time, uh, would this be the period of time that you ushered Paris and Prince out of the room? Yes. Okay. Put up the grocery bag into which Dr. Murray dropped the vials and then put that into another bag? Yes. And took the saline bag with the propofol bottle in it off the IV stand and placed into another bag? That's correct, sir. Are those, following those events, and you've described them in detail earlier, following those events, is that when you called uh, 911? Yes, sir. Okay. During these events, uh, you're obviously aware uh, that this was an emergency situation? Of course, yes. Okay. Were you moving quickly? Yes, sir, I was. And were you obeying Dr. Murray's uh, instructions? Yes, I was. Okay. Now, when you called uh, 911 uh, per Dr. Murray's instructions at 12.20 p.m., uh, did you relay to the 911 operators uh, what you had observed and what you were observing at that very moment? That's correct. Your Honor, at this time, I'd like to play the 911 call. With the court's permission, I'd ask that the CD of the 911 call be marked People's 31 for identification. I'd also ask that the transcript of the 911 call be marked People's 32 for identification. They are marked. Defense counsel has a copy. With the court's permission, may I hand these out to the jurors? No objection. Thank you. You may. Ladies and gentlemen, each one of you now will receive your own copy of People's 32. When you get People's 32, put People's 32 on that document. And as before, uh, put your seat number on it and circle your seat number. So it's People's 32 on the document as well as your seat number. Thanks. Perhaps you may want to give a transcript to Mr. Alvarez. Yes. And the court. And me. Thank you. Thank you, sir. The counsel yes. stipulate that Mrs. Theodoro need not transcribe Mr. Chernoff. I do. Mr. Walgren? Yes, Your Honor. Stipulations accepted. Ladies and gentlemen, do each of you have your own copy? I think it's still being passed out. Okay. It's People's 32. One moment, please. People's 32. 
Does every juror and alternate have a copy? Yes? Uh, Nate, okay. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, as I indicated once before, the actual uh, exhibit is People's 31, which is the CD of any recording. People's 32 is a transcript prepared by somebody else. Use it only as a guide. If you happen to hear something differently from what is transcribed, rely upon your own recollection and your own determination of the facts. Thanks. Mr. Walker. Thank you. I'm now going to play the 911 call. Was that your voice? Yes, sir. Is that difficult to hear? It is. Now, was you relaying uh, the address and the information and that Michael Jackson was at that time on the bed? Yes, sir. Okay. And Conrad Murray at that time was uh, still attempting CPR, uh, according to the recording? Now, at that time, uh, was, to your recollection, was Michael Jackson uh, removed from the bed to the floor? Yes, sir, that's correct. And at, at the time that you moved, or please describe how Mr. Jackson was then moved from the bed to the floor. Well, um, uh, Dr. Conrad Murray was at the top of the bed, at, uh, at the top of the bed, and I was at the, at, his, at the feet of the bed. And so I um, said, we need to move him to the floor. Or you, uh, I grabbed him from his, from, from his legs, closer to his ankles in that, in that manner. And um, Dr. Conrad Murray grabbed him from, from the upper uh, torso 
and um, we proceeded to move them just down towards the side of the bed. As you were doing that, did you notice uh, any IV tubing uh, coming from the area of the IV stand into uh, Mr. Jackson's body? Yes, sir. What uh, did you see? There was a, a, a long, clear plastic tube that was uh, hanging from the, the, the IV bag that was still on the IV stand, and it was connected to Mr. Jackson's leg. And at some point, did you see Mr. Murray, excuse me, Dr. Murray, uh, remove that yeah. point in time? Correct. What did you see? I seen him uh, uh, pull it, pulling it out of his leg. Okay. And at the time that Mr. Jackson was moved, uh, did you observe Conrad Murray uh, attach some device to Michael Jackson's finger? Uh, yes, sir. And again, was that at this point in time that you've described? Correct. Describe what you saw. Um, he, his hand was uh, to his side. Um, Whose this, hand? Uh, Mr. Jackson's uh, hand was to the side. And um, there was a, 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 like a brown box right on the bed. And um, uh, Dr. Conrad Murray actually uh, clamped it or clipped it onto his finger before we moved him down to the bed. Okay. So when you first, uh, on that day, at that moment, when you first saw this brown box, it was on the bed? Correct, sir. Okay. Not attached to Michael Jackson? No, sir. Okay. Was it attached to Michael Jackson? No, sir. Okay. And then you saw Dr. Murray take it, and you described, uh, and for the record, you described him uh, clipping it on to Mr. Jackson's finger? Correct. Yes, sir. Your Honor, if the court desires, we can unplug the uh, the audio so we don't have the feedback. Yeah, we're getting a little feedback, and Deputy Jones is going to help us out with that. <laughs> Thank you, sir. May I proceed, Your Honor? You may. Uh, I'm going to have an item here, Your Honor. It's the uh, proximeter. Previously booked into LAPD custody, custody as item 135. Uh, it's previously been shown to defense counsel. May this be marked People's 33 for identification, Your Honor? It is. Okay. I'd like to take a look at it real quick. You may, Mr. Turner. Okay. Let me know. Mr. Walker? Thank you. And I will at this time ask that uh, People's 33 be moved into evidence, Your Honor. <coughs> Any objection, Mr. Chairman? No objection. People's 33 is received in evidence. Mr. Alvarez, I want to show you uh, People's 33. And uh, Describing for the record, it's a, uh, a small uh, plastic device uh, attached to it as a dark um, 
neck lanyard or cord. Uh, do you recognize this item, sir? Yes, I do. Is this the item that you saw laying in the bed uh, at the time you were moving Mr. Jackson from the bed to the floor with Dr. Murray's assistance? the area of jurors uh, one and seven to the area of the uh, alternates in this case. Thank you. Mr. Alvarez, you began to, I, I'd asked you if you had an idea of what this device was on June 25th, 2009, uh, and you began to indicate you did. Uh, can you uh, please explain what your knowledge was of this device at the time? Yes, sir. Okay. And does this appear to be the item uh, that you saw Conrad Murray pick up from the bed and clip on to uh, Michael Jackson's finger in this manner? It does. It, it appears. Yes, sir. Okay. And at that time, uh, did you have any idea what this item was? Um, yes, sir. Um, uh, a few days prior. Um, but, uh, Oh. Let me add, as as a medical device, did you did you know what this item was? Uh, somewhat, yes. Okay. Um, let me ask you uh, before you explain that. Uh, may I publish this to the jury? Your Honor? Any objection, Mr. Chernoff? No. no objection. Thank you. People's thirty-three can be published. Uh, uh, a heart monitor, I believe he, he, he mentioned um, something to that extent. Yes, sir. Some, some, to, some description of it being a monitor? Yes, sir. Okay. Correct. And that was a few days prior to June 25th? Yes, sir. Okay. Could have been a week, something to that. Okay. But on June 25th, 2009, uh, when you first saw this device, it was laying in the bed? Correct. Mr. Alvarez, at some point then, uh, following uh, the call to 911, did Fahim Mohammed arrive in the room? Murray, clip it on to Michael Jackson's finger. Well, what I remember, sir, is that a, a, a few days uh, uh, before uh, June 25th, uh, Dr. Conrad Murray came down towards the uh, security trailer, and um, he came in uh, uh, and asked the, the security staff if anybody had batteries, uh, AAA batteries to be exact. And uh, there was one uh, of the securities, which is Isaac Mohammed, uh, that reached into his briefcase and uh, was able to pull out uh, uh, two AAA batteries and uh, then proceeded to give them to uh, Dr. Conrad Murray. Okay. And you had seen uh, Dr. Murray holding the device at that time? Yes, sir. Okay. And was something said by Dr. Murray that gave you some idea uh, of what this device was. Yes, uh, um, I remember asking him uh, what that was and